Hey guys, welcome back. This is Chosen Architect. Today we are going to be setting up the coveted rainbow generator. So I hope you guys are ready. So guys, today is going to be all about power. And uh, I went ahead and already got the room done over here on the west side. Um, this is pretty epic. You can already see I've already kind of messed around with my networks. So I'm going to explain that here in a little bit. But let's jump into our new room. Now it's not completely done because we still have to add some things. But here is our energy room. We got some redstone from the ceiling. We got some orange concrete. The reason the orange is here, you'll find out because this up here is where the giant tier eight draconic energy uh, sphere is gonna be. So that's where our power storage is gonna reside. Each one of these walls here, well, we have that all in our inventory. So yes, we are gonna be making the rainbow generator today, also making the tier eight energy core, uh, which that doesn't really take very long at all. It actually builds itself. I'm gonna explain that here in a little bit, um, which is pretty awesome. But anyways, I have these organized in a very specific way. Uh, so let's go ahead and just look at this for a second. Um, this is a, my plugs and I had to change my network setup because we're about to be entering in to a different kind of power grid that requires two separate networks, one for input and one for output. Um, so these are plugs that are gonna be accepting power and the red is going to be sending power into our giant draconic sphere, right? So I had to make a separate network that is called input. So that's exactly what I've done. I've created all this network that, uh, all these cables that are input. And then the one, the, the cables that are on everything else is my output channel set up exactly the same way. It's just called output. And that's gonna pull power from our draconic sphere and is going to put that into any machine that we need to power. Um, so gotta keep in mind, you gotta have two networks if you're gonna be setting up this draconic system because otherwise you'll get a power loop and you don't want a power loop. So let's also talk about this. I have these set up in a very specific way as well. These are a few of the machines that actually generate some pretty nasty effects. I want those all to be centered in uh, one specific location so I can better manage all of that. Um, like the death generator needs to be in a very specific location. Um, the wither one needs to be in the same location as the death one. That way, uh, whenever they're on, we don't have to worry about coming over here and that way we know exactly where these bad things are at. The halostosis generator spawns endermites. Uh, we gotta be careful with that. I'm gonna set up something to hopefully manage the endermites so that way they don't get out of hand. And then also the frosty generator, which we should be okay. We may have to put some more lighting here, but as soon as we get that done, everything should be good. So after we get this all done, we're gonna get started. So first of all, let's just go ahead and work on getting our actual power storage uh, set up before we start working about automating the rainbow generator. Um, to do that, I think I'm going to set this guy right in here. And I think this will be like, a pretty good center point where we should have enough room up top and bottom to hopefully maintain this thing, um, which we're gonna need to pretty much just break into here. Which of course this was just block swapped. And yeah, we should be able to place this. I wanna actually place it in the wall. You won't really be able to see it once it's placed in there, um, but I don't wanna see the outside uh, like core part. I want, it to, I want it to kind of seem like it's coming out of the walls basically. So it's going to get this pulled out and then I'll show you exactly what you need to do. All right, so let's go ahead and get the, corbel, the, the stabilizers. Basically you need to place the stabilizers like this and it will automat or automatically uh, multi-block for you. Um, now I might go back and, and swap those blocks back there, but I don't think we're really gonna see them. So I'm gonna continue doing this and this also lights the area up by the way. So yeah, we'll just go ahead and do this. Bam, all the way around. Just like that, perfect. So let's go ahead and build out to the center. And we need to figure out right exactly where center point is, which I think is right here. And from there, we're gonna place the energy core. Just like that. We need to make sure we're in the dead center of all of this, which it looks like we are. There we go. And if we are, it should say core is valid. Stabilizers are invalid is what it says. Stabilizers are invalid. It should be fine. 
we go to, oh, that's because we're on tier one. We need to tier this up to tier eight. Stabilizer's valid. Core is just missing its, its uh, required components. Um, so let's actually go down here. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and go ahead and make the rainbow generator. These are the, you, you, when you make the, the generators, you need to make two of them. So we're actually gonna go ahead and make each sl uh, sa slab of the, uh, the rainbow generator here. Like that. And then all you gotta do is combine the slabs. And that makes the rainbow generator. So we need to have that out of our inventory and for good reason. So we can pretty much get rid of almost everything in our inventory. Bring this stuff down here and worry about just putting in a bunch of draconium blocks. So tons of draconium blocks and tons of, of awakened uh, block. Now, if we go up here, we're probably gonna need to have more in our inventory, which it'll tell us when we need it. But you can see right here, build guide, and then it says assemble core. We can click this and it will actually build it for you. No tricks. It literally will build this thing for you. Um, when I found out about that feature, I was absolutely blown away. Because I thought before you'd, had, you'd have to build it yourself. Nope. There's an assembly guide. And it just does it for you. No, you don't have to sweat at all. And yeah, it should be taking it all out of our inventory. We're going to need more Awakened Draconium, I believe, than this. But you can see, this room is just barely big enough to support this, which is perfect. I didn't want it to be any larger, because um, there it goes. There it starts placing that. Perfect. And yeah, this isn't going to take too long. I think we might have enough Awakened. It will stop if it doesn't, and then I can just click on one of these, and it'll reassemble. Yeah, I might be just barely, 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 barely made it. Let's go ahead and grab some more. More Awakened. Like I said, you can just click on this and assemble the core. It's going to finish its checks, and then it's done. And then all you need to do is activate. And there is your giant ball of power, tier 8 up here. All right, so we need to go ahead and get our power set up. So let's go ahead and do that. We need our energy pylons. And usually you want to keep these on the same level as your energy core stabilizers. So that's what I'm going to actually do. Um, is going to, I'm going to keep them on the same level. So let me go ahead and place draconian block there. I'm going to place my stabilizer. And then on the bottom, I'm going to place the glass. That way I can kind of see that going there. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the other side on the exact same level. Remember, we need to be on this level and on the bottom. So one of these need to be input, one of these need to be output. You right click here to change that. So that should be set to output. And what we want to do is put a point on the output. Because remember, this is going to be pulling out of our system. And this is where we need to make sure we select output for our network. And I dyed it green because that's the one I want to use for everything to power everything. Over here, we're gonna use a plug. Or sorry, the output needs to be a plug. What am I doing? <laughs> I'm doing everything opposite. Hopefully, I, hopefully I'm not confusing you guys. Let's pull this off. That was supposed to be a plug, because remember we're pulling power out into a different network. So plug there in that case. Also, we want to have this turned off for sure. We don't want a, a transfer limit. And over here, this is a point, and this needs to be changed. We need this to be set up into the input network right here. And of course, none of that stuff. Perfect. So now this is pretty much done. We can go dark glass, and we can close that up. And that's pretty much all we see when we look up now. We have this giant sphere above us. That looks so cool. Um, but anyways, we need to get the rest of this stuff set up. That's why all these points are set up. Um, and we can even change our power over here. This needs to be set because, like I said, anything that puts power into our network needs to be selected under the input. 
And right now, that should be sending some power. Let's go to our west side. And now we should see power right here going in to the Draconic Ball, which is perfect. So for the most part, for most of these machines, uh, except for these two right here, even though the, uh, the heated redstone is going to require redstone, um, they're going to require their own specific setup. But uh, for the most part, you're going to be using these items. And I'm going to kind of show you exactly what I'm going to be doing to get that to work. So I'm going to get a little bit of room down here. And these are going to be hidden underground, so we won't ever really have to worry about it. But what we want is we want definitely our node to be on top. Right here, one block directly underground. And we're going to be working on the first one, which is going to be the, the coal generator. And it's going to be very simple to set up. I mean, very simple. Um, we can probably even turn this on. That way we can make sure we can get out of here. Um, what we need is a roost. Right? A roost and... This is probably not going to need it that fast, so what we can do is a roost. Hold control to place that backwards, I believe. No, it needs to be normal, like that. And then an energy condenser, right? And then in between this and the, the node, we can actually do uh, this as well. Because like I said, this actually doesn't need to transfer that fast. But probably we'll go one block further down for any other setup. There's that desync issue. So there we go. So that should technically work. All we need now is to get emerald chickens. And the thing is with this, like not everything needs a bunch of chickens. This could probably get away with like one or two chickens, probably just one emerald chicken. And what we're going to be using here is probably coal or charcoal. Charcoal because it's got a lower EMC value. So let's get out of here. And we'll just pull one charcoal out. And yeah, this will basically be putting charcoal in here. Automatically should go right into there. And that's where that GPS is going to come in handy. We'll use one of the GPSs. Shift right click on the block we want it to insert into, which is the survival generator. And then place it in there. And our survival gen should start cooking. And you see it takes a long time for this. I think even the coal gen is going to be able to handle what we just set up. So I'm going to do the same thing over here with this. And honestly, we're going to maintain most of everything. Whenever I get to this, I'm going to show you how we actually set up the magmatic as well. So when it comes to setting up the lava automation, it's pretty simple. You have awakened draconium block underneath the crucible should give us the fastest speed, which we really don't need speed to be honest. Uh, but what we can do is we can make sure this one uh, sends fluid right here to two different nodes. And I'll show you why here in a second. That way we don't have to have too many of these. So right now this is sending lava to this transfer node. And then we can also make sure it sends it to this transfer node as well. Both of which should fill with lava in here. It doesn't actually show the fluid in here. Don't, don't look at it there. Look at uh, the other way. But this should technically work. Um, uh, the other issue it looks like Maybe that's going up top, but we shouldn't have to worry, shouldn't have to worry about that. It's not actually configured, so uh, we shouldn't need to worry about that. But that should send lava to two separate places. Let's go ahead and I'll show you that. Basically, we'll select both of these individually. And we'll just come into here. One will be lava. This one right here will also be lava. And that should fill both of these with lava. Now we need this one to just be the simple redstone automation. So we'll select this one. And honestly, the uh, the setup for this should probably be just about the same as everything else we've been doing. Just roost, you know, going down. And like I said, if it needs to go faster, there's other ways to make things go faster. But this setup like this should work for most cases. And, you know, should be just, just fine. So yeah, we'll just set this one to redstone. And we're good to go. So when we go setting up the rainbow generator, some of the more advanced ones that you're going to have to set up for is the potion generator, which I've done a setup before uh, using the integrated tunnels, which it works really, really well. I just can't really hide it that well in this setup. So I'm going to utilize something different. And then we have the slimy generator, which isn't too bad to set up. It's just getting milk, getting enough milk to keep this thing going. 
uh, can, can, you know, be kind of uh, stressful. And then we also need to worry about the disenchantment, which is its own beast, but I think we can conquer this thing pretty well. Let's start off first with the potion generator. Um, not going to be too difficult, I don't think. Let's just come down here, and we'll just make ourselves a little room, and we'll we'll start working on this. Um, and I guess just fill the hole in as we go. We're going to need a pressurized tank. We're going to need some way to fill this thing. So, of course, with the pressurized tank, we are going to need a sink of some sort or some way to fill it up with water. There's many different ways to do this. I'm just going to utilize the sink for right now. We'll go ahead and auto-extract auto into here. Make sure it's an insert. And that should fill this huge tank up. Now, we also need to get bottles in here, and we need to get them in there very fast uh, to be able to maintain this potion generator, which runs uh, needs to be running at least every eight ticks. To do that, we're probably going to use an item conduit with, with max upgrades. Um, coming out of an energy condenser. So, down below here, we can set up a roost. And that roost is going to be outputting into an energy condenser. Inside the energy condenser is, of course, going to be bottles. Um, we also need to make sure that, that roost has chickens in it. We can get away with one chicken being in there. And if we kind of accelerate this process, we'll be able to see how like just with one emerald the uh the entire thing fills up with bottles it's it's quite crazy how fast this goes there's a lot of build up here and what we need to do is we need to pipe that into here and like i said a good way to do this of course is into io conduits extract always active insert and then put those upgrades max extraction upgrades in here that way it just fills up really fast and we end up with a water bottle in here um, now, I should be able to pull, I think, uh, I have to put this into a chest. Like, this has to go into something. Um, and we can auto-output that into a transfer node. And, by the way, I'm using a pressurized fluid tank. Um, but on the output here, we can change the setting to push. And hopefully that'll be fast enough to push this item into here. Um, and then all we gotta do is go up top here and set this to our potion generator and then come back down and take this marker bam that should put that in there right away now the problem is, is you're going to be left with an empty bottle uh, the best way to get rid of that is to throw it into a trash can I don't want to recycle it there's no need that just will create more issues there we go. We can trash it and we can facade this. Um, and we need to also put some upgrades on this as well. We need this to be on extract, by the way. And this to be on insert. And then, of course, throw the uh, the max upgrades in there. And we should be good to go. 15. And that should hopefully be fast enough. Yes, that's totally fast enough. As long as this is running full full stop, we should not encounter any issues whatsoever. So, that's the potion generator. So, for the next part, it's going to be the enchanting, or the de-enchanter. Uh, this guy right here. Uh, the disenchantment generator. We're going to need to be setting this up to pretty much auto, uh, automate enchantments. Um, and it shouldn't be too hard to do. Really, what we need is these few blocks. A magma, or magma crucible, a fluid dictionary converter, and an enchantment factory from industrial foregoing. Um, we're going to be converting regular experience from solidified experience over... Uh, into the experience that is actually needed for this enchanter. Those also require power, and of course we're going to get that set up. So, let's first get the solidified experience process started. These are three blocks, and I don't know if they can be set directly on top of each other, so I am just going to go ahead and place down here a roost, and, you know, 13 of those are fine. It doesn't really... 6 is probably fine to be honest. So we'll leave six of those in there. Slap that. Throw that with the experience. And of course that's gonna take a little bit of time. And then we need to automatically pull that experience into this machine. So this should automatically be able to pull it out by auto input enabled. We'll set this to the bottom section. And of course this needs a little bit of power. So let's feed it some power. By the way, it may sound like it's muffled. That's because I have a muffler up there because we're going to set up 
the uh, TNT generator as well. That is another big thing that we have to do. But this is going to convert this into essence of knowledge, which is uh, thermals uh, liquid. We need to have that converted. To do that, we can put that into a dictionary converter, which is pretty interesting how this thing works. Um, but we should be able to set the input here. If we turn all of these off, and we ch or we turn this output off, uh, which we'll do in a little bit, we just need this to be on a specific side. So down is what we need. And so we'll select this as essence of knowledge bucket. We need this to be converted into the essence bucket from industrial foregoing. Yeah, it's got to be converted over. So that should allow it to be converted. And hopefully we have this set up, right? This is essence of knowledge. And we're making essence. Perfect. So we should be able to set this up. Let's go ahead and auto output that into here. And that's going to create a fluid essence. And then up here, we need to make sure that the enchantment factory is going to work properly. I don't think this will auto pull. So that's going to be another thing we need to worry about. So I'm going to have to in pull items out or fluid out into that. I'll do that from this side. We'll just pull the fluid out. And this also needs power. We'll worry about the power in the back here. There we go. And where'd it go? There it is. Oh, there must be a block issue there. Maybe we'll get that fixed. Let's see. There is just a stubborn block right there. There we go. Maybe that fixed it. You're just mining way too fast, apparently. I have no idea. This happens every now and then. Like I said, we get like a desync issue. I even had it when I was testing the pack. I, I don't know. It happens every now and then. Not really something I can fix too well. There we go. It finally wanted to go. Selector network. The output. That should be fine. That should give that thing some power. Um, we need to relay this. We need to give it some books. So we're going to have another roost set up. That can go right here. Roost. There we go. And energy condenser. Inside here we need books. Because of course we got to feed this thing. We can give that a chicken. That should last for a while. And yeah, we just need to route our items and fluid. And then we should be pretty much done on this setup. Insert. Extract always active. That should pull out the books. Over here we need to pull the fluid out. And insert into here. Just like so. And there we go. All we really need is a book. And that will just put a random enchant on it. And uh, yeah, that's really, really nice, by the way. Now, we do need to pull the item out of there. And we could do that pretty easy by literally just slapping this on here. And that should allow me to pull the item directly out into a transfer node. If my inventory wants to work with me. There we go. And we should be good. And there's our enchantment. Should be able to throw that in here. I don't know if we have to take the book out. I don't think so. I think it consumes the whole book. Yeah, it consumes the whole book. And there we go. There's the disenchantment generator. Now time to start on the slimy one. So I think to get our slime generator going, I'm gonna need to grab some of these milk cows. And we're just gonna pick those up because I'm gonna show you exactly what we're gonna do with those very shortly. I'm gonna go ahead and pick you up. Milk cow. There we go. And we should just be able to pick all of them up. Luckily we can make these things, so it's really nice that we can do that. By the way, I did change my roof on here. Um, it shows the sky now. Of course, right now you can, can't can really see it, but the sun's right there. Um, I was just trying this out for this room, seeing if maybe this uh, the sky block from Open Blocks looked good in here. And I kind of like it. When it's lit up, it kind of looks like it's actually daylight, which is kind of nice. But yeah, it's, a, it's very interesting. It looks really good at night, though. Let's head back into our area. 
Of course, we know where our power room is because it's very bright over here. Look at that mess going on over there. So I am noticing that one of my generators seems to be not running, which is the halitosis generator. I may have to figure that out. Um, my guess is probably that it just needs to um, have more chickens, probably, to keep it up and running. Everything else is running good. Even over on my right-hand side, everything seems to be running pretty smoothly. So yeah, it shouldn't take too much. Well, let's go ahead and get the slimy generator set up. So I have four cow stalls. I also need a tank. Probably the same tank that we just made. Pressurized. Pressurized fluid tank. I think will work. There we go. And I'll just place those stalls around it. We're going to need two little areas for this. But this, this setup should be pretty simple in, in, in itself. Um, we're going to need to be able to provide it buckets. So, of course, roost. One of these fellas. And energy condenser. If this actually lets me do it. For some reason, like, like I said, the inventory has been acting very weird for me. At least on this update. There's that. Okay, now that should work. Uh, we need buckets. So one bucket, and I think this actually, uh, like, it uses a bucket, so we're going to have to, like, uses it up there and leaves it. So we might have to figure out a way to pull the bucket out. Um, but it should be, this should be fine. Now down here, we probably need to get in here and put a couple chickens in. At least one will be fine. I think. I think one chicken will be fine. Alright, and we're going to have that pull automatically into here. We shouldn't have to be super fast with this, so I think this will work. This should technically work. Alright, and then um, we're going to need four cow stalls, one on each side. Just like so, and we're going to put our cows in there. These are going to be producing milk. Uh, they produce it kind of slow, but hopefully this is going to be fast enough. Um, it says next usage in about two minutes on each of them. Unfortunately, like that, and I don't think you can speed this up with like anything. Like acceleration wands don't work on them. But it does look like we have a little bit of milk. So let's go ahead. Each one of these already have uh, four buckets of milk in them. Let's go ahead and configure the I.O. So we'll pull from here, 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 and here. And that'll give us some milk. I'm hoping that that's fast enough. I don't know how fast the generator can go. We may be able to limit its output power. That way we can save on milk. But if, if this doesn't work, there's other ways that we can, you know, get milk faster. All right. So with that being said, um, I mean, we can also even do... We can try, well, no, nah, I don't want actual cows down here. That's the thing. Anyways, <laughs> let's let's get out of that. Um, this, we can just have it automatically insert into here. We will have the bucket be pulled from the bottom. We'll pull from the bottom and we'll push from the top. That will push a bucket directly into here. And we should be able to set that marker here. And that'll be our first marker, which will be an item form, I do believe. Yeah, it needs to be item. So we're gonna need another one over here, which we can go ahead and set this and set ourselves a chicken, because this just needs to be slime. We'll have another output here. Energy condenser, output, there we go. And this one's gonna be slime. Let's hope we have enough for slime. And after this, we pretty much have the rainbow generator set up. <laughs> I mean, literally. All we got to do is check on our halitosis generator and figure out what's going on with it. So this is another item one. And 
All we gotta do is wait for all of our roost to activate. Pretty much this should work, I hope. And I hope this is fast enough for all the fluid for the cows. We'll see. So I found out what was wrong with the halitosis generator. I guess sometimes it leaves an empty bottle in there. I don't know why, but I, I fixed it. So I just added this down here. So that way um, it would automatically pull that out. But from what I see, everything seems to be working. The only one that's not working yet is the slime generator. And I think that's because of the bucket needs to be auto exported as well. So we need another trash can. Right, I think. Trash can goes here. And then we can go ahead and set ourselves an item conduit. Set that to insert. And then of course, open this menu up. Always active. That should pull out the bucket. It's not, oddly enough. It's just emptying out the slime. So we need to get a filter on here. Filter for a bucket. And yeah, that shouldn't be too difficult. As long as our, our TNT generator cooperates. Extraction filter. Bucket only. That should work. As you can see, it's not actually that fast. The problem is, is I also need to make sure that we have enough milk. Like, milk is going to be a big issue. If I need to make more of those cow stalls, I definitely will, because those cows are not too hard to make. So, I went ahead and had to upgrade this, because this was definitely not keeping up. So, I upgraded it to 20 cow stalls now, and uh, they are all producing milk, so I really, really hope this works. Um, we do need a Yetta. Let's grab our Yetta. We'll connect that. I hope that this will work. I hope this will be enough milk from all of these individual cows that it should supply and keep this thing rolling and not have any issues. Because it was stopping, and I can't even activate the generator with, in, with this stopping. This cannot stop. Now, there are ways, apparently, that you can slow this down by, in the back, halving the output that these things generate by cutting the, uh, the RF in half. Um, that is something that you can do. And I've been told that that definitely does help. But yeah, this should, I think this will work. I think this will work. There's, it should maintain, there's a lot of milk going in there. Like I said, there's 20, 20 plus cows at this point. And I do want to fill all this in because it does show up in the map and I want the map to stay clean looking. So I'm just going to fill in the rest of this and kind of cover it up. Poor, poor cows that are under here <laughs> that are going to be completely covered up. But, I mean, we're pretty much done with our generator here. We should be able to activate our generator now. And it should be able to fully function. And we shouldn't have any problems with it at all. Alright, let's do this. I need to grab one more. And everything should be pretty much done. The only thing we have left to do is facade. Which we're going to need white concrete and we're also going to need a few conduit facades and that should be about it so i'm gonna go ahead and get those conduit facades done and uh yeah i'll be back so here we go all we got to do is tack this up it looks like they're all running this one's gonna first give me the wither effect there we go it does look like the light doesn't actually act like it's supposed to uh, on those sections I might actually have to figure out what to do there. I might just remove them entirely from this section alone. Let's place one there. It doesn't really matter. Bam and bam. Completely clean. Oh, looks good. That wither effect, though, has got to go. Wither effect has got to go. All right, we should be able to fill that. Yeah, that actually doesn't look too bad. We'll just make sure this process is the same on this side. And we'll make them look even. <laughs> we run on the concrete, we run super fast. So there we go. The snow shouldn't stay here. All of this is painted glowstone, so it should help with that 
effect we were getting. I also might need a bucket of milk, just myself. Uh, let's get bucket. And we actually have a cow that's around here somewhere. I don't know where it's at. To be honest, it's somewhere. Because we did have a fluid cow. Or not a fluid cow, a regular cow. Huh. I guess he disappeared because I made him with the market. Anyways, I guess I don't really need it that bad. Alright, let's go ahead and place down the rainbow generator. We also need a plug. So I think I have one in here. And this guy should maintain itself. We should have no issues. And we should be able to place this thing right above or right, right here in that hole there. Um, and we're going to have the point on the other side. So let me grab some fruit. Only need it for a split second anyways. You can teleport into here. Place down our rainbow gin. It's going to go all crazy. Slap a plug on that. Make sure we select our input network. And there we go. Now we're inputting 25 million RF a tick. Yeah. Pretty ridiculous, but that's exactly what we're doing. 25 million RF a tick being generated in this room. <laughs> it's kind of ridiculous. It's kind of ridiculous. Um, Endermites. Oh, we were going to get rid of that. Um, probably the best way... is the grinder. This guy. And this, honestly, I don't really know a pretty way of setting this up. But we should be able to use this. And it should work on killing those little guys. Alright, let's get point. Oh, also on that note, I almost forgot. We actually need to break this because if I can get up here. This right here needs to be turned off on the limit. 25 mil now. There we go, because the limit was off. All right, so yeah, that's going to start spawning like crazy. Let's go ahead and put the mob here. Take get rid of those guys. Um, yeah, this need, this is probably gonna take the place of this. And we need a point. Output network, and that should hopefully take care of that. By the way, this is the new display thing that is really really cool. That is when you open this now. It's a little display book. Which is still from the Project Intelligence, remember, that I was talking about before. But there we go. There's the Rainbow Generator, guys. So, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, don't forget to click that subscribe button if you haven't already. And also give this video, guys, a huge thumbs up. I really appreciate it. You guys are awesome. And as always, thanks for watching.